What is the most fundamental element wounds need to heal? Oxygen. Did you know most standard dressings prevent the flow of oxygen to the wound bed? The Oxygeny system includes the Oxygeny oxygen generator and Oxyspur oxygen diffusion dressings to provide a standalone full wound closure system providing continuous diffusion of oxygen therapy. What the device does is it actually pulls oxygen from the air and converts it into water and then back to, like, directly back into pure oxygen and that goes to the wound bed. So you're actually getting oxygen delivered to the wound bed similar to the way you breathe now or how you use an oxygen tank or a respirator. We're doing the same thing for wounds. All solid state, very quiet and very lightweight. I have been using with great success over the last year and a half continuous diffusion of oxygen by EO2, which as you know is easily applied to the patient and with great, great patient compliance, the patient has been getting better than normal results. So with these chronic wounds, we're healing them faster, quicker, with the adjunct of uh, topical oxygen and with the continuation uh, with continuous diffusion of oxygen, we continue to give our patients hope for the future by healing their wounds via diabetic foot ulcers, venous leg ulcers, or any other types of uh, ulcerations that occur on the lower extremity. It helped heal the wounds probably twice as fast as they normally would have healed. A study that was actually fully blinded, uh, both the patients and clinicians were blinded this study involved oxygen going to a wound dressing with offloading. And the entire systems were identical in both arms. The only difference was in the placebo arm that it was an active device, but the oxygen flowed inside the device that did not go to the wound bed. Otherwise, all the dressings, offloading, everything else was identical. So an overview of how the study was set up, we were looking at primary uh, the outcome being full wound closure. Secondary outcomes, which I'm gonna focus on first, included time to wound closure, effect of the baseline wound size on wound closure rates, and also effect of wound chronicity because we had run-in period, uh, which only moisture therapy is applied in both arms uh, prior to applying CDO devices. Uh, and we looked at how fast the wounds were closing during that part. This study was published in Journal of Wound Care and more recently in Wounds. It was designed with the United States Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is our reimbursement agency. And they cited this as being the gold standard for how states should be going forward. In summary, you can see in the papers, there's more results published than what we talked about here. Overall, we closed more than twice as many wounds. However, as the wounds got larger, more chronic, we're in weight-bearing services on so the plantar aspect of the foot. Um, and frequently debrided wounds, the delta, the results got better for CDO. And interestingly, when we look at the patients that drop due to severe infection uh, for hospitalization, CDO resulted in 75% decrease in severe hospitalizations. The quicker it was on, the less pain I had. This is a pilot study done with 20 patients by a group of nurses up in Chicago. This was set up so that uh, the nurses could choose wounds as long as they were painful, they could choose what type of wounds they wanted to treat and see which ones responded best. They tended towards leg ulcers that had a vascular component to them, i.e. very painful. The overall median pain was eight across the board, but here you can see different wound types. And what was really interesting is that 100% uh, of the patients, actually 100% of the wounds reported complete pain relief, all went to zero except for one while the wounds are still open. So if you wanted to look at how fast this happened, uh, by the first visit, which is a median of four days, average just over three, over half the patients had at least a 75% reduction in pain. So fairly significant reduction fairly quickly. Multiple patients re reported pain relief the first day. So now I'm gonna switch gears and go into studies that are either recently published within the last few weeks, International Wound Journal, for example, with UT Southwestern and Lavery, 
Also then Baylor College of Medicine, we have a couple of pilots on going there and those are interim results. So the first I'm talking about, this is just recently published. Uh, the full paper can be found on our website, it's open publish. This looked at just a three week time period and trying to look at underlying factors why wounds are healing. So we looked at growth factors, cytokines, and wound perfusion. And that's actually non-invasive methods. So it looked at per peripheral wound perfusion using TCOM. Uh, you can see there in the three-week time period, over half the patients had at least a 50% wound area reduction. These were chronic wounds going in. And what's really interesting is that the first week we saw significant increases in cytokines and growth factors. Uh, for growth factors, for example, ranging from almost 300% to over 800% in things like BEGF, TAGF beta, PDGF, and IGF-1. And cytokines also had uh, significant increases. However, they are a little more delayed. Uh, some peaked in the first week, some in the second week. I'll show you in the next page graph. And as I mentioned before, we did see uh, significant increases in TCOMs, which I, is, I was not expecting because that is peripheral to the wound, not in the wound bed. So here you can see the, the timeline of the cytokines and growth factors. Uh, the growth factors are the four on the left, the cytokines are three on the right. Uh, the growth factors peaked in week one, two of the three peaked in week two, and then decreased, which follows a fairly standard inflammatory response to a chronic wound reawakening. Our first day is a toe amputation study. We were trying to look at preventing tissue necrosis in toe amputations. Because we've seen this in the field, we want to try to investigate this in a more formal uh, study. So this again is a short study. This is, these are amputations, sort of surgical, uh, only a four week study. And at four weeks we saw, or, or interim, we saw no necrosis with CDO. So none of the wounds reopened um, versus a 43% incidence of tissue necrosis going on in the control group. If you look at the amount of successful complete healing at four weeks, 75% with CDO versus 29 in the control. And a wound length reduction also 70% greater with CDO than in the control group. And because of that wound length reduction, a second study was started uh, looking at interior neck sur surgery scar reduction. Uh, and this is for thyroid or parathyroid surgery. And what they looked at there was not only better scar visualization, which is more qualitative, but also quantitatively using lasers, looked at scar length reduction, saw a 40% greater scar length reduction in that surgery with CDO. And if you look at scars that were greater than 10%. Uh, most of the wounds with CDO, almost 80%, were greater than 10% scar reduction versus over 70% when the control group were less than 10% scar reduction. We find that CDO results in lower cost as well as slight improvements in quality adjusted life years when we compare it to negative pressure wound therapy. We also see that with hyperbaric oxygen therapy as well as advanced wound dressings. And we find that overall, th these results appear robust, even when we incorporate uh, different assumptions and also include uncertainty into our analysis as well. Prior to this, hyperbaric oxygen, uh, total body hyperbaric oxygen uh, was my main treatment modality. And I uh, have since switched many of my patients over to continuous diffusion uh, oxygen therapy um, after seeing the results um, of increased granulation tissue, um, getting wounds to go from their um, uh, chronic state to their healing state. And I would recommend uh, if you haven't used this modality in your uh, treatment protocols that you give it a try and uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised to see the healing that occurs uh, after using this treatment. Decreased time to healing and cost of care. Wound healing and pain relief. Patient friendly yet safe and convenient healing at home. This is Oxygen Evolved. And we are EO2. For more information, visit EO2.com. You can also visit YouTube for more educational videos about EO2.